Hey, good afternoon. Keith Andrews here. It is August 19th. I'm pretty sure today's the 19th. Because tomorrow I have a closing. That's the 20th. So today has got to be the 19th. Anyways, I'd like to welcome all of you who showed up today. This is great. And uh, we got a lot going on uh, through the rest of this year. A lot of things happening with a lot of people inside EXP Commercial. And there's a whole lot going on in EXP Realty World. So we might be there for them. Might be able to help them out when it comes to buyer's representation. They're, they're all having to deal with that now. So uh, anyway, just uh, as you reach out to the realty folks, make sure you uh, say, hey, how's it going? Or uh, let them explain to you what they're having to do. And maybe you can help them out or something. I don't know. It's up to you. I mean, they're your referral source. So it's a great referral source for most of us. Anyway, so uh, I don't see any first time visitors or anybody that hasn't been here in a long time. So uh, I'll just open this floor. We don't have a guest speaker today. So I'll open up this floor to anybody who wants to uh, bring up. I saw Nancy had raised her hand prior to the recording. We could start with Nancy. Uh, so Nancy, if you want to bring up what it is uh, you want us to chit chat about in the next few minutes, we'll be happy to help you. Great. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, still morning for me, but you know, um, two things with the, with the changes that's going on over in realty, has that crossed over to commercial that you guys have noticed at all in terms of buyer rec? That's my first question. The second question is unrelated. Anybody want to answer that? It has not. No. It hasn't affected me. Okay. I got all no's there, Nancy. Okay, so that means when you sign, you still have to sign a buyer rep agreement, and it's still whatever your rate is, still continues, no pushbacks. Yes? I never you entered a agree. transaction without a, an written agreement, and I, that's been my that's been my policy for a while. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, we, we, we've always done client representation agreements. They could be a lessee, they could be a landlord lessor they could be a buyer they could be a seller whatever yo you should always have client representation agreements in place okay and okay. in the ones that we have it talks about money getting paid for representing them and it always has mm -hmm. so, all right does that help yep yep that sure does thank you anybody um, else want to say anything besides well, well one thing you want to add them there saying that in case the seller doesn't, I expect you to kind of compensate. It's actually in there, Max. It's it is? Now there's third parties. It is. But it but we we always we talk about oh yeah. Who's paying what? It's part of the negotiation and we've never been shy about speaking up and asking who's paying for what. Oh yeah. You never want to do that. You always want to know how you're getting paid, right? Exactly. Because if we well, don't ask, I, we might not get paid. Right. I think well, also, it, for me, it's a good primer for my clients, whether it's a lease or um, a buyer, just to understand, like, I'm working for them. If somebody calls, they find a place, they call me. Because sometimes, even a larger company, you've got an individual that's not very... Uh, adept and hadn't doesn't have a lot of experience in commercial real estate transactions, mm -hmm. and so to me, not only the commission, but it's just a good primer on kind of how yep. you should work and act. Okay, good to know. Thank you. What was your? Oh wait, we got some hands raised. Let's see, Blair beat you, Rich. I think Blair, you go first. Age before beauty, Keith. Oh, yeah, that's right, Blair. Hang on, Reg. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> get, in, get in line, Reg. Now, mm -hmm. as far as a buyer rep agreement goes, uh, I, like a number of you, have used it for decades. But I also include a retainer clause in my rep agreement. And What does that look like? Pardon? What does that look like? I don't understand. What do you mean? What does it look like? Well, it basically says that I am going to charge a upfront retainer of X 
and that money is refundable or actually applicable to the commission if and when that buyer creates a, a, a purchase. Yeah. However, if they never do, then I keep the retainer. There you go. I can't tell you how many times in the past <clears throat> I've worked and worked and worked on behalf of a buyer and they go, oh, I changed my mind or, oh, I did this or, oh, I did that. Um, it's just my way of making sure my time is compensated for one way or the other. It's not free. And Larry, they also, they go and <clears throat> uh, uh, work with an other agent without telling you, although they have a representation agreement and all that, and then they expect to get that money back, which I told them, you know, SOL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Blair, is there a time frame to that? Like, do you cap it at one month, two months, three months, a year? My rep agreements always start out at a year or when a transaction occurs on behalf of the purchaser. Okay, so you charge a, so so the buyer would have to pay up front, whatever that fee is. Correct. And then if a transaction concludes within a year or sooner, then that gets applied to the commission that's owed to you. That's correct. And then how often does the seller pay for the commission and how often does your client have to reach into their pockets and pay the difference? Well, that changes by by the opportunity. They're never the same. Okay, so there's I, no trend no, per se. No. I have eight different properties I'm showing a tenant right now. The comp plan on every one is totally different. There aren't two of them that are the same. Oh wow. Okay. And then what do you what how do you set your retainer based on I mean how do you set your retainer fee? What's your time worth, Nancy? Huh? What's your well, time worth? Well, yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah but, I have an idea of what it's going to take me to come up with the amount of opportunities that they're looking for or what they're looking for and take into account, am I going to have to do a tour with them? What, what all of my... What are my out-of-pocket costs that I will not recover if I don't have a retainer and if I don't have a transaction that finalizes? It's been as much as ten thousand. It's been as little as twenty-five hundred. Okay, that's that's helpful. Okay. Hey Blair, can I ask you a question about that? Sure. So I appreciate your wisdom and knowledge on that. I like doing that as well. But sometimes if I have a slam dunk, which is few, <laughs> but if we've got a lease where we know the client needs something, we're going to work maybe a couple of weeks, get a lease. It's a small deal. You know, do you still require a retainer fee or, or on something that's quick and easy and small? Will you kind of just try to get it done? I mean, you're going to have a buyer's rep, but will you always require a retainer fee or is that mainly on a, development deal and other deals that take a lot of time? I do not always, and my exception is not based upon that. My exception is based upon the credibility of the client. Mm -hmm. For example, the, the one I was just talking about has been, was referred to me by a EXP Realty person in the state of Washington. He knows the buyer and has known them for years, speaks very highly of them. They come with all kinds of credentials. Uh, I find it really kind of hard to uh, suggest that they may not pay me. On the flip side, uh, I've got another one right now that they came out of nowhere. It's an investor, uh, and they're going to pay me up front. That's just all there is to it. Very good. 
that's helpful. Thank you, Blair. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Rich had his hand up. Thanks, Keith. Hey, uh, Nancy, I'm all sage advice from all my colleagues. Um, are you out in California? No, I'm in Washington State. Okay. Because, I mean, the buyer rep agreements are not as popular, certainly out here. It could be a geographic thing. The, the bottom line, though, is you just have to have a relationship with who you're working for, and, and they have to be credible. So just taking a fly-by-night buyer and you don't know anything about them, you know, you run the risk. Because in, in a lot of cases with me, when I work with buyers, I only work with buyers that I have relationships with, and I always establish what that buy side is going to be in a simple email without a buyer rep, because the buyer reps typically are, if you buy a property, I get a fee, whether I find it or not. And that's not a, a real popular situation with uh, with buyers. Sure. But what, I, what I really wanted to address to you, though, is your original question was in regards to the NAR lawsuit. And while it does not pertain to us, because remember, uh, residential deals with consumers, we deal with professionals. So there's an expectation on the commercial side that the people who are involved in that transaction have a certain level of sophistication. Mm -hmm. However, that being said, the, what I am concerned with is when the dust settles on this, because remember, when they rewrite the rules, and they will rewrite the rules, because that's what attorneys do, it will impact us simply because we have the same license. They don't write new laws or anything like that and say, well, we're going to differentiate between residential and commercial. It's the same license, and the mindset is it's written for residential, not commercial, and right. we have to abide by it. So I, I am I've been I haven't followed that very closely, but I'm deeply, deeply concerned with what these these excuse my French, but these bastards are going to do when they rewrite the rules because they are ultimately going to do that. Right, Thanks. exactly. Yeah, and that was my question because there are some deals that are kind of between resi and commercial, you know, say like a, a sixplex or a tenplex, you know, and or some land. Well, those are commercial. Those are com Anything over five is a commercial. And that's a, there's an expectation. Five and older is commercial, period. They might be considered a mom and pop investor, but nonetheless, that, that's different than, than than a home. It's that's not the same thing. That's a commercial investor, period. If they're gonna use if they're gonna use borrowed money, that's a commercial loan. Five doors or more is a commercial loan if they are gonna use borrowed money. Right. But I do also know a lot of residential agents that deal with multifamilies up to 12 units. Well, that's and fine, so but it's it's whether they're residential, whatever their designation is, is irrelevant. If they're dealing with five units and up, it's a commercial deal. Yeah. End of story. Okay. <laughs> I'm not interested in that anyway, but but it's yeah. good to have some clarity and know where the boundaries and, you know, where one ends and where the other starts. So, it's all thank based you. on the loan. Yeah. Okay. Great. And um, well, and the other one is I don't know if I, I should take up the bandwidth of the group um, for this. It's regarding the conversation that Keith and I were having earlier. I have potential of be, having my first solo listing. And it's that it it's that um, event space in up in Kalima. And I'm trying to send an email to say this is what I can provide. Sign with me, you know. And so if I understand, I mean, it would this be an appropriate time and space to talk about this or am I taking up every We're here to help there? you. Really? Okay. Well, Anything thank you commercial, so much. All I right. might help somebody else too. <laughs> um, so your, if I understand your suggestion is to, um, this is before I have, I have no listing. I have nothing. And we're just had, we had one conversation. And so what I want to do is say, look, this is what I can offer you. I can do build out. We can do syndication. I can, you know, do the marketing, do the advertising and network with other CRE agents and blah, 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 all these things. And if I understand correctly, Keith, you're suggesting that I do a kind of a mock presentation already in build out, but do not activate it. Is that what I understand? So nobody knows everything that you had sent me that you needed. Uh, several of the items on your list you sent me Friday night uh, can be addressed by build out itself. So when and, you can, and we can ask any of these people here, when you do a presentation because somebody says, why am I signing up with you? You need to present to me. OK, then where do you get your resources? Or what is your presentation you present to that person? in order to get their business to go promote their property and get it sold or promote their business and get it sold. What do you all do for that? My, my answer to Nancy at the moment, based on what she was needing, like 
website of the property and and flyers and all this stuff was, oh my, build out does that. Whenever any of us inputted to build out, it's always in proposal mode. Even when you hit save listing, it's always in proposal mode. A lot of us use it to create stuff in advance if we need it. And that's why I suggested build out to Nancy. Does anybody else have any input there or any thoughts on the subject matter of presenting to somebody because they don't know if they want to sign with you or not? Or, or rather, what do you do to a potential client so to convince them to sign up with you? Yeah, that's I'll jump be. in real quick. Um, yeah. Nancy, I would, since you're kind of newer to commercial, I would lean on uh, EXP as a company, talk about being national and, and 23, 24 other countries, uh, talk about all the CCIM and SIOR people that are involved, talk about these weekly calls you're on with uh, dozens of uh, professionals that have those designations. You've got Keith as your mentor. You know, you could call him your partner mentor, CCIM. I don't have that designation. You don't have it, but and not that we want to pretend to have it, but we got to be honest and say we have people around us like you're doing right now to ask questions and help you through it. So you know, when we don't have the great credentials, we got to rely on our team and our partners. Excellent point. But the the global thing is only for res residential. Commercial, we cannot sell in what? multiple countries. Wait, whoa, right? whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking about? When Paul had mentioned that we are a global company, I thought that was only residential, not commercial. Or maybe I've been thinking about business. Never mind. We can't do business brokerage globally, but we can do commercial. Paul, oh, you can answer that question the exact opposite of what she said, can't you? <laughs> Brent, I, the same thing. Well, I, I think that technically and legally, EXP commercial is national. But you could have a partner up in Canada or Mexico or Europe and uh, get a deal done with them, whether you do referral or co-broke. But that includes selling businesses, Nancy. Yes. Really? All over the globe. Yeah. Oh, OK. Well, but, but I did not know that. Good to know. Yeah, Paul. Paul's already dealing with that. I know this. Yep. So. <laughs> Nancy used to live in Italy. She she and I had a talk or two. <laughs> I meant to follow up with you, so I'll I'll there give you privately. Yeah, we'll <laughs> get there. We got a lot. But let's let's go back to the point that Paul brought up. It, it it's like uh, you've gone to some of our uh, committee meetings we have with some of our other leaders about that specialty that that product group. Uh, for instance, if you go to the corporate services group. And you're competing against JLL and and uh, I don't know who else have the corporate services. All the big boys around the globe, Madge and, and the Elliot. Use, and you use, I mean, you could use a slide from Fred Schmidt that lists hundreds of retailers that we have worked with for over you know twenty years, over thirty years. It's the same. Uh, Jeff Alby put out a slide said, "Look at all these medical entities I've worked with for the last twenty years." You could use that when you're talking to your client because I'm on your team. I'm there to make sure you get that done. That's what Jeff said. That's what Fred says. That's what Rich says when it comes to multifamily. That's what others say. You know, you got Melissa all about retail. She could say that. She could help you out. You know, yeah. it's what Paul said. You're selling EXP commercial. You're not selling Nancy first, are you? Because she's already talking to you, right? Mm -hmm. Now you're trying to tell her why EXP commercial, not why Nancy. <laughs> Because it's EXP commercial that's going to market that property for her, right? Am I off right. track here? No, no, no. I was just actually thinking about, don't you have like an $8 million event space, that winery that's your listing? Okay. So could I potentially say, look, on my team? I didn't have, have to, hey, I didn't have to do a presentation when he looked at me the first day he met me while I was spending three days there for, for Eric's wedding. It was right out of his mouth it says, Keith, we want to sell this place. We tried to sell this place. And I asked the question, you tried to sell it before? He said, yes, we had this residential broker, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, that, that may have been a limitation on you. And he says, oh, yeah, it was. I said, well, you know, we're a global company. So just working in a commercial environment, there's so many different avenues. He's, it, this is commercial, what all this is, a bed and breakfast, a lodge and a winery and land. And he says, where do I sign? And let's get going. I, that was my presentation. Just it's, <laughs> it's, it's, 
It's understanding who XP Commercial was, not who Keith was. I didn't have to say anything about me yet, and I didn't. He just met me. You see what I'm saying? I mean, Paul's on the right track, in my opinion, for most things. Mm -hmm. Once you've been around forever, like Rich and Blair and Max and me, uh, I don't know who else is here, uh, Brent, Nelson, uh, Chuck, even in his world, once you've been around forever, you got tons of clients. You know, you could talk about, look, I've done a billion dollars in transaction in the last 20 years. I just happen to hang my license at this great company called EXP Commercial, which allows me to get the word out to a lot more people on the globe than I used to do it by myself. Even okay, though I succeeded in selling a billion dollars worth of transactions in the last 20 years. So you okay. got both powerhouses. You got my company and me. And they'll say, where do I sign? <laughs> Whatever. Go ahead, Nancy. Well, okay, that's all fine and good. So, so that's all fine and good. <laughs> wait, okay. what what I need is to know how far can I lean in? Like, for example, could I say, look, on my team, my yes. partner has team, a listing commercial. Well, you're my team. You're my team leader, right? You your have broker of your state, Alex, partner. Oh, What's that? Allow Allow me to get this thought through, please, is you have an active listing right now of a winery event space. I need to show, I would like to lean on that and show them, look, we have we have a big listing of an event space. We know how to sell this. We know how to position this. By showing something that is, you know, it's sure. in another state, no big deal. But, but just to say, look, we are experienced. We know how to do this. Would... It, would that be within the realm of what's allowed? Could I use your listing as leverage to prevent yeah. her? I Absolutely. can. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Okay. So then, so how would I structure that? Just send an email of the of the listing. Are are there other people that are into listing event spaces? Just if, I if just, you go to if you go to expcommercial.com and click properties. Yeah. How many properties we got there now, guys? I don't know. But uh, they're not my listings, and I don't know the people who who list them. I mean, am yeah, I allowed? Public to knowledge. You can say, look at all the special event spaces we're already got listed in our company. Look where they are. Look what they are. And then understand this is what we put in as listings, but eighty percent of our industry is off market. So it's really more about all of us, the people you're associated with, knowing about the property you're trying to sell. It's all about your clients knowing about the property you're trying to sell. Well, you don't have a lot of clients yet, but you got all of us who have a right. lot of clients. Show mm -hmm. them the workplace, the workplace pages we have, where it gets out there in front of tens of thousands of people if you want to. I mean, dude, you know, who who in that in that town besides you has those resources? Right? They just want to know the words getting out. And yeah. it'll give you a downside. And you guys love this. I, I don't know if I've said this before in these recordings. The person reaches out to me and says, Keith, you need to sell this property. You need to put in all your systems because I want a California buyer to come over here to our, uh, Alabama and pay this price for my property. That's who's going to buy it. I said, I stick a sign out there on that road in front of that building. I'm going to get phone calls all day long to people driving by there who are looking for this area. They're not from California. You're not going to accept their offers? Nope. So, okay. So I stuck a sign out there, put it in our systems. Nobody from California ever reached out, but I had multiple offers and she didn't like any of them. You see? What Why does she want them from California? Because she thinks that people in California have more money and they will spend more money for a property. <laughs> and, and because the value, the value to them is cheap. <clears throat> Where I thought I was a little overpriced myself. But that's okay. I got phone calls from other people. Got you know had other conversations, things like that. So, mm -hmm. but but why do I say that? Because every person is different. They have their own thoughts. You got to under you got to understand who it is you're talking to. So even before you market, you got to know who she is and what she's thinking about her property, right? You go to the website on the property that you told me. I was looking at that website. There's really not a whole lot there. But, you know, 
there's so many ways to approach every single situation. Like Blair said, he can get paid eight different ways on just showing eight different properties to the same tenant. I mean, everything's different in commercial. It's so huge and yet so tiny at the same time. So limiting and so expansive at the same time. It's all about your client that you're working with. In other words, you're drinking from the hydrant today, Nancy. The fire hydrant is on and it's blasting us all away because there's just too much that we can do. Just letting you know that. Anybody want to well, add to the conversation and I can stop talking? <laughs> no, and it's true and it's wonderful to have such a vast, expansive, you know, group, diverse group of people. And I so appreciate your help. Um, sometimes when you're in a pool of data and information, mm, data management is something that is very useful, is knowing how what to pick from it and how to use it. Because I can't possibly digest all of this information. But my takeaway is to lean on EXP Commercial as a company, to lean on you guys as, you know, I can go to EXP Commercial, look for those kind of similar listings and say, look, we have these kind of listings. And, mm -hmm. and I can, yes. And then to use Workplace as a way to say, look, I have at my disposition all these tens of thousands of agents that could spread the word. So those are two very compelling um, um, uh, offerings plus build out and all the website, the flyers, the, the demographics, blah, blah, blah. Those are three pieces that, if nothing else, should impress her. So Nancy, yeah. let me try to make it, get it a little simpler right now. Okay. Everybody here, how do you market an event center? What would uh, be- Nancy, you, uh, you asked a good Nancy. question. Yes. How far can you lean in? If I was that seller, I'd want to know what event spaces were on the market or what event spaces had sold in the market in the recent past. Mm -hmm. And I bet it'd be very hard to find that information in any of our databases. Yeah. yeah. But if you talk to owners of event spaces in the market, you might learn a few things that no other broker knows. Okay. Even if they're not selling, they haven't sold, they have like, Right? Are you are you suggesting that I talk? I call to the I, I call the I call the three or four guys that already own five event spaces. You can you know uh, ask them uh, tangentially if they're interested in uh, in any more or really how they came to come about all theirs, and they'll tell you a few things that the your your competition might not know. I'm a little concerned that uh, if you're you're if you're competing with someone and another broker and they're at a small agency, they might also be able to make a uh, a build out profile. Might not have Moody's. Moody's might have a few good screenshots for you when you uh, put the property in or the uh, metro area in. Um, but uh, to find data on that particular property type, I would approach the industry in your area. Yep. That's a great hey, Max, idea. Max has his hand up. Max, you muted. Are you having a tough time unmuting, Max? You click and then you go back again. Just click one time. He's got beach on his brain. Oh, oh. There we <laughs> go. All right, there what we is go. it? What it is, I think what we need to do, we need to narrow this conversation and it would help you. Um, in the beginning, guys, somebody taught me to focus on the immediate market that I'm in, say in Memphis, look at the area that I'm interested in doing business in, i.e. retail, office, whatever that my specialty is, and know and learn what is available on the market. And then what I do, go ahead, close the, uh, try to find the uh, people that are interested, interested in trying to buy this uh, particular property. Basically, just very person to person, hands-on, 
and something that you can reach out to. You're talking about, you know, going through the uh, list of all other agents that they have properties in, say, in Vietnam or, you know, California, yeah. <laughs> whatever. It kind of becomes a little bit too confusing and it's hard to kind of put your finger on it and touch it. Try to kind of focus on your immediate area. And once you become successful in this immediate area, you can go on and expand it to your state and I agree. United States and all that. Yep. That's all I'm Aaron. trying to say. And Thank you. Your hand up, Aaron. Hello, Nancy. Hello. I may have some good idea for you. Okay, uh, let's hear Try to determine the property value that can be a good selling point for you if it brings, uh, uh, if it generate a higher income so you can target a, a good uh, potential investor for that property? Well, that's that will be down the road. I'm just trying to simply not get into the weeds right now, but just trying to see, because um, I'm competing with the, her local um, agents. She is probably about 40 minutes away from me. And so there are, but it's a small town. And, and so I'm just trying to um, wow her with what we can do. So once she says yes, then we'll go through the whole thing of valuation and and putting the package together. That's no, Aaron, that was a very good question. I assumed that the property's highest and best use was an event space. And we'd look at that area and focus on that industry. But if, if that's not necessarily the case, then, yeah, you, you make a very good impression by just bringing up the fact that it's possible that another use might bring more value to the property and you would market it different than any other agent. Excellent, Aaron. Very plus, good point. Plus, you, 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 you have to show your, uh, your expertise in evaluation that because it's a, it's a commercial property. It evaluates by the income that it can bring in. So you may be on top of it and just show that seller what you may be able to, to sell it for. You don't know what's the other agent expertise and you're in commercial. So you want to know that, uh, how to determine the property value. And usually it goes by the income and divided by the cap rate to the mat, you know, dig, dig down a little bit. You're going to be mm. able to find out. Or if you need some help, we can help you. To determine Thank the you. There's a lot of pro forma involved on a lot of income yeah. properties, especially if they're not being used all the time. Right. Right. Because it's under, it's being underused. They bought it yeah. for on an auction for $180,000 and, they can't put in, they don't want to put in the amount of work and money to get it up to a fully functioning 100% um, event space. So they're like, let's just get rid of it, get out, and then retire. So that's so kind of their... Maybe you're going to find money. out what is the untapped potential in this property. What's, what's, what, how, how can you add value to it? So you're basically going to promote and market not just the property, you're going to promote an idea as well that comes with the property that can bring a lot more value into it. Right, right. right. So that would hey, be my work. Yeah. So Nancy, I know we threw a bunch of stuff at you. Uh, does anybody else have a comment real quick? Because uh, we might need to get on a different subject real quick. Yeah, Nancy, is it, it's real estate and the business, correct? So it's the land and the buildings and then the event center business? <laughs> It's mainly the building, which is a historic building. It's over 110 years old. That's mm -hmm. being used, 12,000 square feet, used as event space. There are a couple of two bedrooms downstairs, two bedrooms upstairs that they could turn into Airbnb. I mean, it's an Airbnb right now. But, but it is idea. it is real estate and the business you're selling. Well, the business makes net $5,000 a year. So it's oh, okay. I can't sell it on business. <laughs> it's underutilized. Yeah. Yeah. It's underutilized, yeah, but it has potential. So so that's why well, I can't lean into the cap yeah. rate and all investment. The the potential, it sounds better than the business. <laughs> yeah, you gotta right. sell that as uh you gotta sell it as a value add, but like some people said, you can kind of do the cost approach and figure out what the land is worth, the building is worth. The business sounds like it's worth nothing. So all you gotta right. worry about is what is the land value, what is the building structures, improvements. Figure that out. See what if there's market comparables. If there aren't, use the cost approach and um, try to get a number on it. And if you tell them you're going to work on all that and do that once they engage with you, 
then you go to work. But I like, um, I think it was uh, Richard uh, Blair mentioned earlier. I, I don't, I'm not like a realtor. I'm not going to work for two days on a cost approach and then give it to them. And they say, thanks, I'm going with the next guy. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. This is why I don't want to go into the weeds right now. I just want to give enough compelling um, carrots to say, oh, wow, she can do that. But okay, I, I got two words for you to, to yeah. finalize this. Confidence and salesman. We all are salesmen at the end of the day. And, and you got to go more. with confidence. <laughs> Nancy, go the extra mile and do everything yes. you possibly can to show all right. your expertise. Hey. All it. right. So I want to, I want to, I want to move on. Nancy didn't want to take up all the time. Sorry, Nancy. She's got a bunch. No, it's all, it's all good. Thank yeah. you all for your input. Okay. Uh, before I ask a question to somebody, anybody else uh, got something you need us to answer or help you think or what? Nothing? You know, another resource, Nancy, as I think about it, is Chuck. If, you, if he saw the website of that building, he could look at that building and say, you know what? If you did this to that building, that could change everything, right, Chuck? That's a possibility, isn't it? Because he is a, that's what they do. They do buildings. <laughs> okay. So reach out to Chuck afterwards. Or Chuck, you know Nancy, you just do nancydong.expcommercial.com. She'll send you the website. Yeah. Or their superstructure on his. Doug, uh, by the way, how, how have you done that uh, QR code? On. Uh, um, you can actually generate those. Um, if I find it again, I found it on the internet, and you can just uh, QR code generation dot com, and they they'll send you you know, build you a QR code, and you can use it. I think there's actually even a, a Google, you know, free app that will do it for you. Okay. If I come across Perfect. it, I'll get it okay. sent to you guys. Thank you. All right, I got a question for Chad. You okay, Chad? Good, you're here. Every every couple of weeks or so, you kind of give us an update if anything's happening with the advisory council. You know, you you tell us things you guys are trying to work on and stuff. I'm just curious if if you got anything today. I mean, not really. Other than you know, we're on uh, round three or, or try number three of uh, co-star negotiations. Sean's saying we are at the one yard line, um, so that's good. That sounds very positive. It's long overdue. Um, also, I guess there's some exciting developments coming with Moody, something about we have like our own dedicated research team and they're going to be launching, uh, forgive me, I forgot the name of the product because I just really haven't been into using Moody's, uh, but there, there's something new or something that's coming. Um, Zillow. What is it? Is it Zillow? Zillow's match. Zillow. With them. It, the, the product's going to be called Moody's Marketplace. So that's what Sean said the last yeah. week. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So um, that was it. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else. The, uh, okay. you know, though we're still trying really hard to get the mentor program overhaul, but it sounds like we're waiting on some, uh, key, uh, position replacements higher up at corporate to, uh, get that moving again. It's way overdue. Um, and I think that's really all I got. Thank you, Chad. Yeah, you're welcome. You know, uh, it sounded like, uh, Max and I segued into the announcement. Paul might want to tell us all right now. Something about September 13th. We're selling on a recording here too, Paul. That's why I'm saying that. Yes, uh, September 13th, Friday in Nashville, Tennessee. That's about three weeks from today. Uh, we're calling it our IRL Mastermind, or you can call it a Mastermind IRL in real life. So we've been doing in real life for a couple of years now. That came through Keith, through Canada. Uh, about three the, and a half years. <laughs> yeah, but there's a buzzword out there that's been around for a while, but I notice every time I see something online or they ask me to attend a wealth seminar or a tax seminar. It's always a mastermind. So that seems to be the buzzword. So IRL Mastermind, Nashville, Tennessee, EXP Commercial. Uh, mostly commercial people will be there. Uh, we will invite some residential people that want to get in the room with us and talk and learn, see if they want to cross over and come to the bright side instead of trying to do both. Uh, we've got great speakers, including Sean Murphy, who's been on our Zooms before with Keith, who is just a plethora of information, like Chad, you know, um, knows what's going on up there at the corporate level. And uh, he's going to talk a lot about some new things going on at EXP Commercial. And then we've got uh, Daniel, is it Eng, E-N-G? Yeah. Eng. And, and Calvin Wong. Uh, they're going to talk about their uh, success in Dallas and how to grow your commercial business and what they're doing and how it's working. 
Uh, they've been doing work all over the U.S. I know Calvin was at um, uh, Con for an international commercial uh, business uh, or international commercial real estate um, event. I'd like to hear about that. Uh, we've got Marissa Jackson out of uh, Melissa. 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 Yeah. I don't have any notes in front of me. I'm freestyling it. Yeah, Melissa. <laughs> Melissa Jackson. Jackson uh, top realty commercial gal. Lots of award winning. Uh, uh, he said it wrong. He said it wrong. Retail, what? not realty. Retail, Keith. Yes. Retail. Okay. So we're gonna have retail, uh, growing your business. What's going on with EXP? Uh, it's an all-day event: breakfast in the morning, lunch in the afternoon. Uh, most of us gathering to learn, network, and um, grow the company. Yeah. yeah, something excited about what Melissa's done, and Sean brought this up. You know, we have the new groups inside commercial, uh, and there's two or three more phases above what has rolled out so far. Melissa actually has a self. Uh, what's it called? Self-created group in 16 states. So she's our large group inside commercial, but it's not the official grouping yet because they're not at that phase yet on what I'm saying. And you'll understand more over the next couple of months. But I, I guarantee you, Sean will be talking about that September 13th. Our, our major sponsor is Superstructures. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Rick. Yes. Uh, they, you know, Rick will be there for sure. Don't know who else is showing up. So he'll be, he'll be there with uh, Superstructures. And uh, Tom Trung is popping in. He's one of our alphas. Uh, we've got other alphas attending, evidently. Uh, for people who don't understand what I'm saying when it comes to alphas. So what, what I am saying is you have guests. You have people you've been talking to about, why are you sitting over here? You probably need to be the HB commercial now for so many different reasons. The first one is more money in your pocket because you're in commercial. You, you, I mean, it's just night and day when it comes to the how you get paid here, okay, compared to the, a lot of the companies we came from, you know. So this is this is an agent retention. That's for all of us who feel like we're not connected and we need to get together once in a while and see each other and feel totally connected and do a lot of deals. And for your guests, bring them in as well. We have we have everything there. We've got we have Lindy McNeese coming. Did you guys know that she's coming? Some of you don't know who she is, but she's coming. You'll love it. In in uh, chat, Chuck put in in chat about the QR stuff, if you want to look that real quick. Uh, anything else on uh, September 13th? No. Okay, we're good. I would just say real on quick, Jim, link. Uh, uh, Keith, real quick, uh, yeah, the links and everything are on there. Um, but real quickly, you can know. Can you do it again, please? I, I couldn't find it. It's in chat. Go to chat. Oh, it's chat. Just go to chat. Yeah, we just we we just used we pulled one off the internet. It's just a you can they're a dime a dozen and they're real easy and there uh, there's no specific one I can recommend. Just put in a QR code generator and you'll find a bunch of them. Thank go ahead, you. Paul. Going back to the IRL real quick. Um, it's great to see everybody like this weekly. Sometimes on Monday and Wednesday, but Keith and I went to an event uh, several months ago. The CCC, a Contractors Connection. Uh, uh, Eric Clark was there. I think Eric might be on the Zoom. Um, you know, Keith introduced me to Eric. I met Eric once before. The next thing you know, we start talking. Hey, I got something here that can happen. Can you help me with that? You know, it's we don't have time on these Zooms to really get into the weeds, but when you're in person and you're on break or you got lunchtime or you got the evening or you want to go out for a drink afterwards, that's where the deals start getting made. And uh, I've had several leads and deals start. Uh, because of things like this. When you're in person, it's just nothing like being in person in real life. Is that correct, Keith? I didn't yeah. see that at all. And not only that, the speakers meet each other and they start doing stuff together yeah. across industries. I've seen it many times. It strengthens each other's business. It strengthens the company and the growth. It just, it helps everybody. Anything else? Uh, we're three minutes past. I can turn the recording off unless anybody wants something said on recording, any announcement or anything, say it now. Happy belated birthday, Keith. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> and thank you, Rich, for uh, remembering my birthday. You're the only one who remembered it that day. Happy birthday. You mean I send you a happy birthday? Oh, Max did too. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Sure, go ahead. Max, I take, hey. you, I take you for, for you know, what's the word? What's the phrase? I, Granted. Like family for granted. granted. Yeah, I take you for granted. Yeah, that's it. That's the phrase. 
<laughs> okay, I don't want to be. I don't want to get what? less credit than rich. Okay, all right. That's right. You don't want less credit than rich. That's right. Let me turn off the recording. <laughs>